I'm looking for aliens and I found a very, 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 very big one. I'm going to be that fan. I've been... No, I've been a fan of Doctor Who since I was six. And I'm now, unfortunately, 22 years old. What's the point of being alive? <laughs> and... I didn't start watching Doctor Who. The first series of Doctor Who that I watched live was series three. Even though I don't like David Tennant's Doctor that much. Don't ask me why. I need therapy. Even though I don't like David Tennant's Doctor. Series three is still one of my favourite se series seasons. Family Blood Unmatched. Yeah, I lived through series three and series four and the specials. I saw David Tennant regenerate. I saw Matt Smith regenerate. I saw Peter Capaldi regenerate. We don't talk about that. That didn't happen up here. For my own mental state, that didn't happen. <laughs> and then I'm about to see Jodie regenerate. And there's this thing with... There's this thing with Doctor Who, especially with Peter and Jodie. Peter had a lovely three-series arc. You could see progression from A to B. If you watch Kill the Moon versus Thin Ice... That is a perfect, in, that perfectly encompasses the journey that the 12th Doctor goes on. I've been, th I've been through regeneration quite a few times. For the past two Doctors haven't really felt like the Doctor properly until their last series. And Flux is Jodie's best. Series 10 is Peter's best. I feel like every Doctor starts off a bit shaky. I think the best... Act, if I'm being honest, the best actor who's immediately jumped into being the Doctor since 2005 is Matt Smith. Because I'm pretty sure I'm writing saying that Time of Angels slash Flesh and Stone episode 4 and 5 or 5 and 6 of series 5 was the first ever episode that Matt Smith filmed. And spoiler alert, the cliffhanger of Flesh and Stone, no... Time of Angels. The the cliffhanger of Time of Angels is um Doctor's got a gun. There's one thing that you never ever put in a trap. Me. And when I was watching various episodes from series five, I I got to Time of Angels and it got to that speech and I was like that is where Matt Smith becomes the Doctor for me. Because I feel like with the Doctor, you need to be all flouncy, childish, which Jodie does perfectly. But you also need to have that darker edge. And I like my Doctor's dark. And the whole, there's one thing you never ever put in a trap thing, is like quintessential the Doctor for me. And then I found out that Time of Angels, Flesh and Stone is the first episode that Matt Smith filmed as the Doctor. And I'm like, this, this 20 year old man child immediately jumped into this role he nailed it and then arguably as matt smith went through his series he got kind of more horny there are problems with series seven it's it's fine though because richie grant makes up for it richie grant was in three episodes of series seven including the second to last episode of doctor who before peter capaldi came on screen and oh richard e grant <laughs> depending on the actor and i guess the material they're given although i'm not really one of those oh the script writing is shit i can objectively look at i can objectively look at that thing ah oh, what's it called sleep no more i can objectively look at sleep no more and just go that's one of the worst episodes of doctor who but when it gets to other episodes like A Town Called Mercy and The Power of Three, one of them was written by Chris Chibnall before he ran Doctor Who. So bear that in mind. People don't like Series 7A. I do. The Power of Three and A Town Called... Even Dinosaurs on a Spaceship has good moments. Mainly Rory's dad and the emotional stuff to do with how Rory's dad doesn't want Rory and his wife to die. That made me teary when I watched Dinosaurs on a Spaceship. But yeah, Series 7A isn't that bad. 7B, Jenna Coleman, need I say, need I say more? Sometimes Jenna Coleman is good, sometimes Jenna Coleman is bad. 
Um, no, I rewatched Nightmare in Silver the other day. That's a that's a flawed Doctor Who story. To be honest, I was itching to watch Doctor Who, and I wanted to watch an episode that wouldn't make me cry. So I chose Nightmare in Silver, written by Neil Gaiman, the guy who wrote Coraline, and it didn't make me cry. Almost. The best thing in that story is Matt Smith. Uh, I th is Matt Smith the best new series Doctor? Objectively, no, because Peter Capaldi exists. But I would say ugh, Matt Smith second question mark. I've in lockdown. I've really come to reappreciate Matt Smith because I th I had nothing to do in lockdown, so I just thought I'm gonna watch the Doctor Who episodes. I can't remember. Ninety percent of them were Matt Smiths. As I was watching them, I was like. It was like I was watching them for the first time, and I sat there like, Matt Smith is actually really fucking good as the Doctor. So if anyone comes to be like, Matt Smith is a shit Doctor, I'll I'll cut you up. This is this is a threat. You should be concerned. I'll cut you up. Matt Smith is a great Doctor. Peter Capaldi is the Doctor. Shooty Gatwa, however. My original point is, I've been through so many regenerations, I have seen the Doctor be hit or miss from their first series and episode. Most of the time, the Doctor isn't the Doctor until their last. My Doctor isn't the Doctor until his last. He has a perfect three series arc. Jodie has an imperfect three series arc. But Flux is still the best series of Jodie's run, objectively. It, it definitely gets better as it goes along. And that's like the curse of Doctor Who. It gets better as it goes along. And it's not going to be perfect from the start. You just need to like sit and run with it. There are some good ones in Series 11. Series 12 has more good ones. Sorry, I'm hiccuping. And Series 13 is imperf imperfect. Flawed. Perfect with a couple of... I could do a whole thing talking about Series 13. And I will do a whole thing talking about Series 13. But, again, Shooty Gatwa. I've been through many regenerations. I've been in the denial phase. I remember being like, if the next Doctor isn't as good as David Tennant, I'm never going to watch the show again. I remember when Jodie was announced as the first, technically the first female Doctor, Joanna Lumley was the first female Doctor. I was like, Doctor's a woman. Doctor Who is dead. I'm never going to watch Doctor Who again. This is so shit. By the time Spyfall hit, I think I think watching Spyfall live is when I became that Doctor Who fan. Because, spoiler alert, the end of Spyfall made me cry. And ever since then, I've not looked back. I've loved Doctor Who since I was six. I have been firmly into Doctor Who since Spyfall Part 1. And I fell in love with Jodie. I've embraced Jodie. I've embraced the timeless child. And normally I would be so against a new Doctor because regeneration is such a shit thing. For like three to five years you latch on to this person who is your hero. You idolise them. Just as they get to that level of perfection, they are gone. And normally it's like, regeneration is a bitch. I'm never going to watch Doctor Who again. But for the first time in my life as a Doctor Who fan, I am genuinely embracing and happy and have so much optimism happiness good feelings for shooty gatwa let me set the scene for you i was doing uni work i just started to realize that i was in a pretty bad way because i was getting ill severely ill bbc doctor who tweets i have their tweets on i have their instagram post notifications on i'm that doctor who fan and then as I'm doing my uni work, I see that they've tweeted. Okay, I'm doing uni work. I can't look at that right now. Then I see they've posted to Instagram as well. And I'm like, hold on, something's going on. Then I realise that their Twitter profile picture has changed. Because again, I am that fan. As soon as something changes, I'm like, something has happened. It can be a profile picture change. And then it's like, fuck, something has happened. I need to check this out. So I go on to twitter and word on the street is that the 14th doctor was going to be announced on the 14th of may during that football thing there's a football match and traditionally doctor who has placed itself within sporting events like wimbledon for jody something else for pearl mackie which was fucking iconic by the way 
So everyone was expecting the 14th Doctor to be announced on the 14th day of May, which makes sense because 14 on 14. I like to think there are clever people on BBC with their marketing and everything. So I didn't expect on a random Sunday midday for the next Doctor to be announced. And I literally start like screaming and gasping like, the next Doctor's been announced on Twitter? And then I'm I'm faced with, I'm not saying this in a derogatory way. I'm not saying this in a, a mean way. I'm faced with a black guy with short hair and I'm, who I've never, who I've never heard of. And I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Luckily there was a, an article with it on the BBC website doctor who website so i click it and the first thing i see is sex education bafta scotland winner other award nominee and i was like this guy has won awards he has been nominated for awards he's been on stage as well as screen and he was in that show that everyone loves that i've never seen i've never seen sex education but I know that it was like a thing. It was a moment. It was a movement. Everyone was talking about sex education. Then I go on to find that he's the wash your hands, you dirty pig guy. And I remember that from lockdown 1.0. I was like, oh, it's him. And then as the day goes by, there are loads of edits of shooty in sex education. And it's like, oh, this is how he is fighting the Daleks or imagine him dancing around the TARDIS whilst putting makeup on. And I'm just, I, after the shock, I didn't know what I expected from Doctor Who. I wanted the next Doctor to be Richard Iwadi. I didn't know what I expected. Shooty Gatwa is not who I expected because I didn't fucking know who he was. I didn't know who Peter Capaldi was. I didn't know who David Tennant was. I didn't know who Matt Smith was. I knew who Jodie was because of Broadchurch, but I'd never watched Broadchurch and I didn't watch Broadchurch. I got into Jodie Whittaker because of Doctor Who, because she is, let us naysay the naysayers, a phenomenal, fantastic actress. And I don't doubt that Shooty is a good actor. I have this thing where if somebody makes me feel a certain way or a certain thing, practically fall in love with them and when i was watching all the clips clips of shooting on sex education it was making me laugh so much and then seeing him do flamboyant dancing in bright colored clothing and putting on makeup that's my kind of guy and then it was like kiss me on the mouth am i sexually attracted to the new doctor not yet but there is potential and i'm not gonna argue with it because like I think, I think the best thing about the next Doctor being that guy from Sex Education is the fact that he's black and he's gay. We have a gay black Doctor. And that is what we need in the glorious year of our Lord 2022. We need a Doctor of colour. We need a Doctor of not straight sexuality. And Russell T Davis, a white gay man, has given it to us. Russell T Davis, King of Doctor Who? Question mark. With the casting of Shooty, I think I'm saying his name right. I've, I'm, I'm so confident in saying his name. With the casting of Shooty as the new Doctor, there has been a majority good reaction. I say a majority good reaction because so many people have been like, somebody else has pointed this out. There have been so many people who don't watch that blue box show who have said that they're going to start watching it because shoot is isn't it? Sex education is apparently a smash Netflix show here. Again, I've not seen it, but I know that it was very popular and because he was in sex education, which is really popular and really loved and sex education has its own fan base. Everyone or not everyone, loads of sex ed fans have been like, Eric is the doctor. I'm going to have to start watching Doctor Who, which is good. And you could argue that Shooty has been cast for like strategic reasons. 
I, I fully believe that it was announced yesterday before the BAFTAs, so people would be talking about it at the BAFTAs, which Doctor Who is like the best show on British telly. It has been since 1963. Of course you want people to talk about your show at the BAFTAs. Who is going to be the next Doctor is just as big as, if not bigger than, who's the next James Bond, which we don't know yet. And who would I want to be the next James Bond? I saw somebody in something the other day and thought they'd be perfect for it, but I can't remember who it is. Anyway, yeah, strategy. If you have, I don't know, the viewing figures for fucking sex education, say 3.4 million people watching sex education, and you pull the best character out of sex education and place them in a show... A show that is so big in your country and has been so big since 1963 and you place them within context of that whatever percentage of that 3.4 million people who love that show in that character or love that show because of that character are going to flock to this new show doctor who and Legend of the Sea Devils had like 2.3 or 3.2 million viewers. And then if you say Doctor Who fans watch his first episode and there's like 3 million of us. And then you get these sex education fans. There's like 2 million of them. That's suddenly like, fuck, I can't do maths. I'm queer myself. That's like 6 million, no, 5 million people. That's a lot of people coming from one show to the other. So logistically, based on pure numbers alone, it's good. And just looking at him and the stuff that he wears. I'm not a fan of loafers unless it's on Michael Jackson. Confused people wear loafers. But everything else. And he dresses really colourfully. And if you go and look at the sixth Doctor, he's got a... He's got a Marmite outfit in the sense that you either love it or you hate it. And I love it because it's so outrageous and in your face. And I feel like Shuey could get away with wearing something like the Sixth Doctor. And it actually work and be tasteful. On his Instagram, apart from being in his underwear and having a massive bulge in one post. He dresses... Somebody said on Twitter that if Shuey were to turn up to Doctor Who in his everyday clothing they'd be okay with it because he just dresses perfectly I I could run with that I could go with that Shuey has style I don't like I don't like the moustache I would personally lose the moustache but it could grow on me the blonde hair the blonde short hair can stay I absolutely love somebody said on Twitter that like Capaldi, his hair could get longer as he goes through the show. And I was like, I'm here for that. I would love for Shooty. I have no doubt that Shooty is going to be fucking incredible. And I would love for him to do more than three series. I would love for him to be the next David Tennant. And better than David Tennant. I have such a sour taste in my mouth for David Tennant when it comes to Doctor Who. Because it's like... You have this show that's been running since 2005. Whenever you mention it, 80% of people will be like, David Tennant, the one with the Daleks and the Cybermen. And he's like, yes, yes, that's Doctor Who. But there's more to Doctor Who than that. And I get that there's normies who don't watch every episode and don't understand what's going on, which makes me sad and it frustrates me because like, it's really good. Can be complex, can be shit, <laughs> sleep no more. But I, I understand the normies who just watch it for kicks. And I understand that I am so far into Doctor Who that it's basically a circle with me, my head up my ass for Doctor Who. But there is more than just David Tennant. And even with the not TV show stuff that they do, like the comics or the books, it's always David fucking Tennant. And it's like, you've got Jodie Whittaker on TV who arguably has some not very good scripts. If one of those books or comics is better written than the TV show, I want Jodie Whittaker associated with that. Or Peter Capaldi, who's got a fucking reappraisal as the Doctor. Give him some more stuff. Even though he has said that he doesn't want to do Doctor Who anymore. 
But if you if I were to write a book for the Twelfth Doctor, the only thing associated with Peter Capaldi would be his likeness on the cover. I'm not really saying, hey, Peter, do you want to star in another Doctor Who episode? I'm writing another episode of Doctor Who with my Peter Capaldi hat on because I love his Doctor so much. And I want to flesh out his character. I want to add a new dimension to his character. I want to see him and Bill go somewhere that I have created for the people. I am determined to write a Doctor Who book for the BBC, by the way. That's what I'm manifesting. My guy, my doctor, not my doctor, he's not my doctor. Peter Capaldi is my doctor. Um, has said, it was really weird because I said randomly to my agent that my dream role would be Doctor Who. And the next week she called me saying, you never guess who called you. So dream big and manifest. Manifestation is the key. And in the interviews that I've seen at the BAFTAs with Shooty and Russell, their friendship, their collaboration, relationship, whatever's going on between them. I'm not saying that they're in a relationship. Whatever is going on between them, they just vibe all together instantly. Shit, I just spilled my coffee. There's this one photo of Shooty like on Russell with his hand on his face and they're laughing and smiling together and it's like that is peak energy that we need for Doctor Who right now and I wouldn't it's kind of weird when you see celebrities be like oh yeah I love Doctor Who it's been my dream to be in Doctor Who and it's like fucking same where the fuck have you come from you bastard stealing my role so it's weird to see someone who I've never known be like I've loved Doctor Who since I was a kid. But I have faith in this guy. Everything that he's saying about Doctor Who in interviews and, yeah, in interviews and online on his Instagram stories, everything this man is saying about Doctor Who before being the Doctor is, he gets it, he understands it. It seems to mean something to him. He said he's always wanted to be in Doctor Who. Fucking same, but what can you do? I have faith in this guy. And the past few years, I feel like I've really gotten over myself as a Doctor Who fan. Because I was probably like... I was the first person on my high horse when Jodie was cast. Being like, Doctor Who is over. I, when I found out leaked information about Ruth being the Doctor in Fugitive of the Jadoon, I was the first one to be like, Doctor Who is ruined, this is going to be so shit. And then I rewatched Fugitive of the Jadoon and I realised just how much potential Chris Chibnall has opened the floodgates to. Because if you have a Doctor who the Doctor doesn't know about, that one episode you could build so much around it to transition it into the canon. Doctor Who canon is weird, okay? And then by the end of the series with the Timeless Child, it's like, you, this character that has been on TV since 1963, we've practically concluded right now that they are immortal, and we can do so much stuff with that. Then at the end of the flux with the inference slash confirmation of a Doctor Who multiverse, you can do so much with that. You can argue all you want that Doctor Who is ruined or gone to shit with a woman actor or the Timeless Child arc being introduced. I see so many fucking potentials with that. And now with the Master and Ruth, Ruth? The Master and the Fugitive Doctor both being signed to Big Finish. And you could do so many spin-offs with the people from Flux. Carvinista Bell and Vinda with their as yet unborn child. The Grand Serpent I want to come back. I, I would argue that the only bad thing about Flux is the wasted potential. But with Jodie and Chris leaving and having such a massive multimedia output around Doctor Who, you could do so fucking much. And it's my opportunity to bring back the Grand Serpent, Swarm, Carvinista, Belle, Vinda and their as yet unborn child. I would love to take out the Doctor of, from Doctor Who and just have the Flux cast or half of the Flux cast of like Bell and Vinda and Carvinista trying to defend from Swarm, 
the Grand Serpent another thing and then have like a finale of Daleks and then the Doctor shows up because you need ratings and viewers to come. I said to my friend yesterday that how I would do Doctor Who is not how people would do Doctor Who because I feel like growing up more in love with the classic series and then falling in love with a Doctor after they leave based on how like classic Doctor Who they were. I feel like my head is so stuck in the past and then Shooty came along and it's like the future of Doctor Who has never been more exciting and I'm not here trying to discount Jodie because I seriously do love Jodie and I've yeah I've grown to love her and obviously I'm gonna be fucking sad when Jodie leaves arguably I've never cried at Doctor Who more than with Jodie because I'm so emotionally invested in Doctor Who now thanks to Jodie and her awakening that part of me but I've also got to the point as a Doctor Who fan where it's like I literally do not give a fuck anymore just throw everything at me and I'll just run with it because at the end of the day it's not my show I don't I everything that I say and do doesn't go into this show I have no say in this show but this show has a say in my life and with our glorious year of the law 2022 well, I suppose it'll be 2023 or maybe even 2024 by the time that shooty comes along people are already complaining about it being woke because there's a black doctor because there's a gay doctor I've already had to report one tweet because they said because they said they've gone from David Tennant and Matt Smith to a doctor with AIDS and I'm like Jesus fucking Christ, Brian. Get a life. So what if the Doctor's gay? So what if the Doctor's black? Go fuck a horse or something, you right-wing cunt. <laughs> As somebody who's so left and liberated and so gay and love people of every colour and every creed, it's just, this is perfect. I wanted a black Doctor. Granted, it's not Richard Iowardi, but it's a black doctor who seems to understand and know and love how this show operates. Compared with Russell T Davis, arguably king of modern Doctor Who, and a gay man himself, Doctor Who is going to be so fabulous, fantastic. I'm trying to think of dark moments in Russell T Davis' Doctor Who, because all of the dark Doctor Who I like comes from Moffat, and I don't think he's coming back. Oh god, do I have to rewatch David Tennant? Fuck! I hate when David Tennant would throw a hissy fit and be like, oh my god. I can't even think of one at the minute. The one in the the end of time where he's fell through the roof and having a hissy fit at Wilf. Like, fuck off. No, I cringe. Ugh. As long as if M Russell T can channel his inner Moffat for some dark Doctor Who then we'll we'd be set and going because I want the flamboyantness, I want the queerness, I want the campness of Doctor Who but I also want those moments every every couple of episodes where it's like there's actually a history to this guy and it's fucking terrifying and he is the smartest person in the room and I don't know if I can trust him and if he's going to kill me but I'm going to do it anyway because he's the only way I'm going to get out of this situation alive. That is the kind of doctor that I like. And there was a mo there was one where there was a clip of sex education where Shooty is Shooty's character Eric is comforting o Otis, I think, against a vending machine, and he's like shouting at someone. He's like, "Can't you see that we're upset here?" As soon as I saw that, I put it into the context of Doctor Who. I've never seen Shooty in anything. But that moment I was like, this guy has the potential to do Dark Doctor Who perfectly. And then I saw loads of clips of him like fucking around and dancing and shoving people for fun and getting up in their face. And it's like, you are going to be so much fun as the Doctor. You're not going to be my Doctor because my doc Peter Capaldi is the Doctor. You can't top Peter Capaldi. But I have all the faith in the world that you are going to... I don't want to say fix Doctor Who, because Doctor Who isn't broken. People just like to play it like it is. I like to think that as soon as that guy lands on the screen, there's going to be a massive boom of people flock to it. 
Doctor Who is going to be in the public consciousness again. You're going to go into toy shops and there's going to be a whole row of Doctor Who toys again with not just action figures, but everything. And there's going to be massive cardboard cutouts of him. Doctor Who is going to be everywhere again. I want Doctor Who to be everywhere again. With this guy as the face of it, I fully believe that the next era of Doctor Who has so much potential to be the best and most exciting. And it sucks so bad that we have to wait so long. Then, of course, with the new Doctor comes the whole thing of new screwdriver, new costume, new TARDIS exterior, new TARDIS interior. What is... What are the Cybermen going to look like? What are the Daleks going to look like? What are the Sontarans going to look like? What new monsters are going to come up? Who's going to be the companion? What's the companion going to be like? Are there going to be more than one? Is it going to be grounded in family again? So we're going to have a companion living on a council estate who gets sucked out of time and goes to like Victorian era and then the far future and then back home. Basically a repeat of Rose but done tastefully and queerly for 2023. Or is it going to be an old man? Or an old woman? Or is the Doctor going to take someone's mum on an adventure and then the child joins the TARDIS at a later stage? There there are so many fucking questions. I'm such an impatient little bitch and I can't wait for the new Doctor Who. I'm literally going to be... I'm going to make a budget version of Shooty's costume and buy the screwdriver and literally like run everywhere where I'm everywhere I go I'm gonna be the doctor and it's I'm I wanna be an ambassador for this show because ah! I'm getting so excited already and it's not even been twenty four hours since this guy was announced as the doctor and I'm already fucking ready to leap into that TARDIS and go on so many adventures with this guy. This is the first Doctor that I have welcomed with open arms. And it's like, kiss me. Kiss me on the mouth right now. I love you. I don't know who the fuck you are, but I want to grow with you, and I want to love you so hard and so much. So, Shooty Gatwa, welcome to the TARDIS. I love you so fucking much, and you're going to be an amazing Doctor Who. Fuck! I'm crying. Ah! <laughs> this is how much I love this show. Ah! Oh. Not a lot has changed. I'm still crying over Doctor Who. I think that's all I have to say on the matter. I think I've emotionally exhausted myself. I think that's enough of that. I think you get the idea from the fact that I just have to say his name and I start bawling my eyes. Well, not bawling my eyes out, but this is the best you're going to get without me watching, like, not The Tenth Planet, The um, World Enough in Time, or the war speech from the Zygon episode. Are you going to watch it? Are you going to catch up on Jodie and Peter? You might be able to just jump on and watch his episodes from, like, day one without really needing to know a lot. Because Chris Chibnall has said that he's convinced that Russell isn't going to lean into the Timeless Child stuff. Which would be cool. There's so much potential with the Timeless Child. I like the idea of a soft reset. Just being like, this is your Doctor. Here's what we're going to do with him. And then just have the passing. Oh my god, imagine all the references that he's going to make to the, to the past. Fuck. I can't wait. I cannot wait. There's a thing on Twitter. I retweeted it. Casting him feels like a mission statement. He's not an unknown. He's not a famous from a BBC drama that only British people have seen. He's the breakout star of a global hit for the kids. And I bet that's exactly what Doctor Who is about to become. I've never seen this guy. But just watching interviews with him has just made me be like, you're fucking amazing. You get it. I'm here for you. Get in that TARDIS and get on my TV now. In case anyone was wondering about my views on the new Doctor. There you go. It got a little messy. I do apologise. But, um, yeah. Next episode of Doctor Who. October. 90 minute special. It's essentially another Doctor Who movie at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, one last time. I'm looking for aliens.